Uh, good morning. It is after 11, 11, damn it. <laughs> Took a little bit longer for it to connect, but uh, yeah, we're here. It is a Sunday morning. I am very tired this morning. As my Discord people know, I just want to make sure, can you guys hear me? Because for, yeah, this is the first time I've ever streamed to YouTube on my new um, setup. So I'm just gonna just make sure that you guys can hear me. <laughs> That's important. Um, let me just see. Morning, Ryan. Hi, Roman. Uh, Roman, sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, yes, it's, I'm incredibly tired this morning. Um, my cat, as you guys know, is a jerk. And he sometimes likes to, you know, jerk it up. That sounds bad, but just be like extra jerkish at night. <laughs> And at like three o'clock in the morning, two thirty in the morning, he started like running around like a maniac and meowing and just being crazy. And he's old, so I get it. But I was like really needing to sleep because yesterday was a lot. I was really not impressed <laughs> with him. I'm like, I'm gonna throw you outside. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Sarge is, is, can be a bit much sometimes, but yeah. And then on top of the fact I came home last night to him, um, uh, I'm covering him. I came home last night or yeah. Yeah. Last night to like poop, pee, vomit everywhere. <laughs> like he left me some gifts, not, not like poop was thankfully was in his litter box, but the remnants of it on his paws were it's just like everywhere and I'm like good oh, this is good this is great um it's totally what I want to come home to after a very difficult day it's absolutely wonderful <laughs> so yeah that was annoying um anyways so if I seem low energy and you can tell by the bags under my eyes like I got like very little restful sleep that's why. <laughs> but at least I got lipstick on, so. Hey, Sergey, welcome. I guess it would be uh, afternoon for you, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'm also making food. So, yeah, I'm going to be, like, making my breakfast while talking to you, <laughs> which I hope is okay. Um, but I've got my Greek yogurt. I've got coffee. Um, yeah, got Greek yogurt coffee and then I'm going to make these little buns that I made. They're like, which is okay. What's really great about them is that you can tell when they're starting to go bad, um, or when their freshness is <laughs> disappeared <laughs> and, um, you, I have to put them in the microwave to kind of like get them back to what their former vitality. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. But um, yeah, uh, there is a slight delay. Did I do that? Uh, oh yeah, I added about 30 seconds of delay. Got it, okay. So yeah, these little buns, I'll show you them. Uh, if you want the recipe, I got it off Tasty, I think, and adapted it to whatever I had. Um, and they're delicious. They're a little bit hearty. <laughs> it's, it's a true winter bun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, very delicious, except they go bad really quickly if you're only one person. So I'm kind of having to like stave off them growing mold, <laughs> um, as quickly as possible. So yeah, um, I'm going to go get my breakfast. I'll be right back. <laughs> Enjoy.
Sarge in his, sorry, Sarge in his chair. Um, and I'm sorry for the rustling. Hello. Um, I always get stuck on my shirt. It's really annoying. But yeah. I'll be right back. BRB. Sarge is such a butt. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> hey, uh, Zansha, how's it going? Okay, we're just gonna have to just hope that that doesn't drop in the water. So yeah, what's every, how's everybody's day? How's everyone doing? Um, we, I haven't done a YouTube chatty in a very long time. Um, the last time I did one, it didn't end very well. There were some weird people that came in. Um, do I, is that a bruise? What is that? Weird. Yeah, there's some weird people that came in the end there and they were like, are you a tranny? <laughs> okay, so I was thinking of, um, how many did I put in? Two? I think I did. I think it's way too much for how small this cup is, but whatever, fuck it. Uh, that, was a, that was a weird time, so yeah. Hey, Dharma bun. Is this a Clint Eastwood Obama rant? What? I don't get it. <laughs> Pop culture. I'm the biggest idiot. I was looking on Twitch wondering why you hadn't started on streaming over YouTube. Yeah, sorry. I should have um, reiterated that it was a YouTube stream. Um, like I said, I haven't done it in a while and I figured I should probably uh, get... Because um, I know that not everybody that is... Not everybody's interested in watching gaming streams. I get that, because um, it, it's really dependent on you know what the person is playing and all that stuff. So I get it. So I want to make sure. Yes, it's your coffee. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Pretty good, just here in my jam room. Yeah, everybody's like Sundays are the perfect day to jam. I remember back in the day, that was our jam day, it was Sundays. I don't know, it just seemed right. You know what I mean? And uh, you had to be there, fair enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, I don't know what I was, oh yeah, I'm trying to give my uh, uh, YouTube subscribers some love as well much deserved and all that you know what I mean so yeah these are the buns they're like the way that I made them was a little bit strange because like it has a little butt butthole <laughs> because I was like trying to make it into like a braid and turn it like this and then it turned out like like this I don't know so it's quite um but I'm so happy with like the gluten content and like the way that it the inside of it looked legit it's it's very much like a um like a bagel kind of it's a little bit more dense because it's a it's a 
it's a hefty bun. <laughs> Um, do I still play guitar? Yes, I do. Um, not as much as I used to. I'm not sure why that is. Um, <laughs> it's just like in the past month or two, I think the last, well, yeah, I haven't played in like a month, let's say. Like I don't play every single day. I should, but I don't. Um, but I am trying to complete a record right now, um, and I'm considering what sort of, oh my God, Sarge. Seriously, bro, I can't do anything with you around. Like, and your paws are covered in poop, bro. Get out of here. Get away from my food. So, Sarge and I are not getting along today. <laughs> we are getting on each other's nerves. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm trying to decide on like um, guitar parts and all that. Get away! You can't eat my food. <laughs> you don't even like eggs. Go away. Oh man, that stinks worse than your butt. Um, yeah, thank you. He doesn't like it when I yell at him. <laughs> hey, Victoria, welcome. Yeah, a bun hole. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> a hefty bun. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It it is a like a a dense. It's a dense bun, in a good way. I hope this is okay. Good. Um, what's everybody having for breakfast? I'm sorry if you can hear my chewing, but this is a breakfast stream after all. Um, in 12 years? Okay, so Denny, you know what's up. And also, it doesn't help that uh, the majority of my like equipment, my musical equipment, since I've been living in flux, like as a nomad for since 2016, more or less. I haven't been um, stably housed, I guess, for a while. It was, it was just like a, a whirlwind of like, okay, well, I guess I don't have a home. That's cool. Um, and so lugging a guitar case around. And I mean, it's different if it's a an acoustic guitar, which I do have as well, but I don't like it as much as my electric one. Um, it's just harder to lug around with you. I just have to think of a better way to do that, I guess. What recording program? I use Logic Pro. Just because it was easy. Um, I've also tried Ableton. A friend, a friend gave me like a burned copy. That was years ago. He gave that to me like maybe seven or eight years ago. Haven't even touched it. <laughs> because you know as with anything you get used to a program and you know where everything is and you know and I'm relatively new to using software um, maybe even like after on better like not even no human conditional I didn't do anything in software I did everything hard like on a guitar or whatever um, I just prefer and tell me how you guys feel about this I just f prefer it coming out organically as opposed to sitting there and programming something I don't know um, Walter you asked if I would act in a horror film um, it would be it would be fun I'm not a fan of horror films personally but uh, if it had a cool storyline yeah sure I like ghosts hello are you looking for eggs? Um, strawberries and Dr. Pepper. Very nice. <laughs> I had an avocado with toast and fried egg on top. Mmm, yum, yum. Bye, Victoria. Have a good day at work. Give a shout out to me, Eden, Texas. Hi, Eden, Texas. <laughs> 
or RMJ, RMJ, I don't know if that's what you're wanting. Welcome. Um, man, I'm like so low, low energy today. So this is not what I wanted. I was so mad. Three o'clock in the morning, just being like, I just want to fucking sleep. Fried egg, sausage, and coffee. Mm mm mm. You dig the shirt with the dude being sawed in half? Oh, and there's also some legs and a person down there. Uh, excuse me, no. It's like, oh, if I get on the lap, then I can steal a piece of bun. Uh, I got this at a, a vintage store and they, they do a bunch of different screen prints on vintage shirts, like old shirts. So, like, usually from sports teams and stuff like that, they'll take that and then they'll screen print something new on it. So, for example, they have a lot of, oh, that was a while ago, though. They had a bunch of uh, Golden Girls screen printed shirts. They had, they di also did the um, Misfits Christmas ones. They're, it's all by the same screen printer. You had a marble or a light for breakfast. Nice. You had an omelet with some coffee. Lovely. Um, we have Houston, San Antonio, and Eden in the house. Go Texas. Yeah, Texas has a very... Stop! Has a very... Uh... Okay, see? People can see you. Is that what you want? Is you're like, I don't like to not be shown. Do, do, do. Texas has always been uh, very well represented, <laughs> which is great. I love Texas. Texas has great food and great people. You had scrambled eggs with cheese at 4.30. Walter, what do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? That seems like, you know, bus driver hours, you know? I have a friend who drives a bus and he's like, uh, yeah, my, my days are really fucked up. <laughs> I don't have days. I don't know what day it is sometimes when I wake up and I'm like, shit. Yeah, that I feel that I used to work in a warehouse for this, like for a summer, um, uh, like my summer off during college, it was the weirdest hours. We worked like eight o'clock. No, what was it? 6.30 to 2.30 or 6.30 to 3 or something in the morning. So then I would get out and be like, uh, what? And, I, I, and if you know me, I am not the type to, st I don't know why I took this job. Like, I'm not the type of person that stays up well. <laughs> no. Stop. Um... So it was like 2.30 in the morning, I would get out and be like, is this my evening now? <laughs> like, what do I do? Do I, so I didn't know how to like properly, can you not please? He has food, he just doesn't want to eat it because he's protesting the fact I'm not giving him like the tasty food. because that's the food that upsets his stomach, so. <laughs> hey, Mark, welcome. And upsets his stomach and then I have to clean up all of it. Um, oh, you work in retail, I was, it was, it was my day off and I was drunk and bored. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, but I, yeah, I have also done retail that starts at five in the morning, which was great, actually. I loved it. I loved starting at five, and then I was off work at 10. Um, and don't you dare, Sarge. Bro, I don't know what your deal is. You want me to feed you food that literally gives you runny diarrhea. Like, you would rather do that. <laughs> you would rather do runny diarrhea. 
<laughs> I love starting that early. It was so fun. Oh, but there was the one time though that <laughs> I got a ride with one of my coworkers because I didn't have a car, like I had a bike and sometimes I had a bike to work at 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> like da, 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 up this huge hill. It was, it was not a good scene. And I stopped doing it because I was coming to work and had to literally like baby wipe myself. <laughs> like I was just like, oh my God, I'm sweating so much. It was nasty. Um, oh Jesus, here we go. So, so, uh, yeah. And then I, my like coworker came and got me one morning. Actually, no, it was right before she got me and, um, right before she got me. And then there's this guy standing by the door. And he was just kind of hanging around the, the bikes. I don't know if I've told this story before, but it was really funny. Um, so he's standing there and I'm just, and he like acknowledged, he gave me like a head thing. And I'm like, okay, hey. And I, it was kind of scary though, because it's like 4.35 in the morning. And there's like this dude standing there. Um, and... Uh, He's, he's very intently waiting for me to leave, obviously. And previous to that, maybe like a, a month or two, um, I had s stopped a bike theft. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd stopped a bike theft because this guy was like brought out these huge clippers out of his, his backpack. And I was just like, hey, it wasn't even my bike. I was just, I don't know being a good Samaritan, I guess. I don't know. So I'm like, okay, guy in the middle of the night standing there. I have lipstick all over my finger. Um, guy standing there. Okay, this guy's waiting so that he can steal a bike. <laughs> so yeah, um, he stood there and was just like, <whistles> and I'm staring at him, staring at him. And he's like, uh, you waiting for a ride? I'm like, None of your fucking business, dude. But yes, I am. He's like, wow, early morning. I'm like, uh-huh. You're a bike stealer. I know. I know it. Um, yeah. I had another thought, too. Somebody was saying something about customers suck sometimes. People can be really mean, especially the mean old... Oh, Walter. My God. <laughs> Don't even get me started on mean people when you work in the and when you work in retail like people people's sense of entitlement to to just the most mundane things they're just like i don't know like for example uh working at a grocery store um you well i worked in like a produce area kind of I think it was um when was this in 2006 anyway it doesn't matter we would have people come in constantly and complaining about the produce like oh this tomato is is tasteless i want a refund i'm like <laughs> listen i could go uh, on and on and on about factory farming and how you know things don't taste that great for that reason and, and blah 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 but if you want the, a refund on your $1.69 beef steak tomato go right ahead I don't care but it was as if you as the worker have personally murdered their family like it becomes personal you caused this tomato to taste like shit you did it you know they make it so personal <laughs> And 
I, uh, at first, and I still kind of do take it really, really personally if someone comes up to me and says that to me or had, you know, ever had launched a complaint. Um, but there were some times where I'm like, you're very, very clearly in the wrong. So yeah, go talk to management. I don't care. Go, go for it. It's <laughs> no skin off my sack if you do that, right? And um, hey, chaos, welcome. And then you get, but it's, it is true though, Walter, you were saying about old ladies. Old ladies are the worst. I, I know that they, you know, life is difficult or whatever, and I'm not trying to sound ageist, but old ladies were particularly mean. Like, <laughs> and they were the easiest to shake off because I'm just like, lady, for real? Like the lady that yelled at me at the fucking grocery store. And that happens to me a lot. I don't know what it is. I think in this case, she was just racist. But I, I messaged my sister to tell her, like, I almost punched out an old lady. <laughs> Which isn't funny, but at the same time, it is funny. Um, because this woman was just on her, like, on a rampage. I don't know what her problem was. But then, I don't know, you guys tell me what you feel about this, but line butters really bother me as well. Really, really, really bother me. Um, if there is no lineup respect, there's only chaos. And I can't handle that. So, is that a law, law, blahs? It's a um, grocery, grocery store chain here in Canada. And this woman is behind me and she's like, I'm sorry, um, I'm in a really big hurry. Can I go ahead of you? And I'm just like, okay, well, you know, I don't have a lot of stuff. So I'm like, yeah, go ahead. So she goes in front of me, but then proceeds to gripe about every single thing that she bought to the cashier. Like, oh, but the... <laughs> The sign said it was two ninety nine. dollars um, Can you go check it, please? I'm like, bitch, what happened to you needed to get out of here in a hurry? Who the f... Oh, my God. And I'm just, like, quietly stewing and staring at her, like, okay. In a hurry, huh? Great. Oh, my God. I was, like, wanted to... If my eyeballs had daggers coming out of it, she would have been skewered. <laughs> it's good. Uh... This old bra got mad at me because we didn't have two of an item that she wanted. She was like, I'm never coming here again. <laughs> classic, classic Karen move though, right? Like, I want to speak to your manager. That's why I really enjoy um, uh, the, um, the Reddit, sub, the subreddit, Choosing Beggars. Choosing Beggars is like a, a gold mine of retail stories of people not even retail, but also just people selling things. And oh, it's fantastic. It's great. <laughs> I like it when they'll say they'll never come back and then you see them a week later. It's so true. Never coming back here again. You guys are, you ruined Christmas. I've gotten that one before. You ruined Christmas, Christmas for my son. I'm like, good. <laughs> and Santa doesn't exist either. <laughs> Um, is there ever going to be another Impish Salt album, RMJ? Yes, there is. This year. It was supposed to come out last year, but, you know, life got in the way. So, um, yes, it's going to be a priority this year to get that out. So stay tuned. It'll be good. Mm. So... Yeah, re working retail is hard, man. For for that reason, when you have people like that, just treating you like garbage because, hey, Arons, treating you like garbage because of oh fuck, did I put sugar in this already? Oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> Hello, Sarge. You can't drink coffee. I know you wished that you were human, but God, if you were human, you'd be a pooping, vomiting disaster. 
be like a really drunk college girl, right? So how's everybody's week? How was it? Are you geared up? Tomorrow is a holiday. Um, Uh, <clears throat> here in Canada. I don't know if the, I, I heard someone saying that they also in the US have the day off tomorrow. Um, it's a President's Day or something? Am I, am I imagining that? I might be imagining that. And um, <laughs> yeah, this year-ish, <laughs> more or less. Um, so is it going to be a holiday there? Because tomorrow's a holiday here. It's called Family Day. So you can sit back and relax with your family. Oh, damn it. Actually, I did it. I don't think I did. Yeah, it just tastes like normal sugary coffee. <laughs> I'm sorry for chew I'm trying to like not obnoxiously chew. <laughs> used to work at Wally World? What is Wally World? Like Walmart? <laughs> because in my hometown, um, there is a place called Wally World. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. It was a water park that was for, yeah, for kids. And it was called Wally World. So I was like, wait, how do you know about Wally World? Um, so a London question for you, Lo do locals love Stobie's Peach as much as my friends and I'm from, and, and I from Michigan, we played a show at Collie Office years ago and loved it. Oh yeah. Stobie's is a, is a, is a mainstay, um, especially for, you know, drunk university students, <laughs> but not only that, they're, most people enjoy it. I can't remember if I've ever eaten Stobie's pizza, but, um, it's it's delicious uh, from what I understand <laughs> and people do yeah rave about it yeah that's so funny you guys are talking about Walmart and I'm like Wally world really <laughs> I wonder if I can find um, like pictures of Wally world <laughs> you probably don't care but London Ontario let's see if I can Okay, so now, oh, so it does technically still exist. Oh, whoops, excuse me. Um, oh God, Ooh, what happened? Go back. Yeah, it closed in 2002. So this is, this is it. Whatever happened to Wally World? See, I'm, <laughs> I'm not lying. Wally World did exist before 2002, apparently. Um, I'm live in New Hampshire, and all the candidates finally left my city work this week. Candidate, like the pre presidential people. Clearly, I don't really follow politics anymore. I'm like, I don't even. I I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I went on a first date one time and ate spaghetti. Never again. Not the most romantic looking thing to eat. I don't think eating at... There's any way that you can romantically eat. You know what I mean? Like if you're on a date with somebody, eating is just like a naturally disgusting thing. And if your date, say, like has misophonia or something, they don't like hearing people chew or watching people eat I'm like why are you here because <laughs> I was that I think I, I went on a date with a guy and was like ugh, can't I can't stand watching people chew I'm like then why are we eating dinner like <laughs> clearly it's it's putting me at a bit of a disadvantage here it was sushi though so you like your American coffee like I like my German cafe <laughs> synonyms to one another Do you miss playing with Kitty? Uh, 
I miss playing. Yeah, totally. I do. Um, it was super fun. And uh, if you haven't seen my latest video, you should watch it. <laughs> Imagine if all your listeners were actually talking about a kid's water park. It wasn't, okay, it was marketed to children, but we also went as teenagers because they had like a, a what? No, stop. They had a water, uh, sorry, what do you call that? A lazy river. They had like a wave pool. And there weren't many like water parks in Canada. Or in, there was like Wild Water Kingdom and Wally Worlds that I know of anyways. And then I think there was for a bit um, one at like our version of Six Flags kind of. Um, you're hypnotized by Sarge. Yeah, he's, do you want him? <laughs> I'm just kidding, babes. You hate people that drink? Drink alcohol or just drink in general? I know you can probably hear me swallowing, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Sergey Pancakes. I have a question for you, chat, for everybody that's in, oh my God, there are 23 people watching. <laughs> Hi. I have a question for you. When you were in a job, like you have been working in a job maybe for like a few months or whatever and you feel like you've kind of gotten into the groove of it you know more or less what you're supposed to do uh, what you're supposed to do what kind of coworker are you when a new person comes in are you the type that gets a little bit annoyed with new people or are you the type that's like you know I understand <laughs> what you're going through let me help you because I always find that those that excuse me um, people fall into a different, a couple of different categories uh, when a new person comes in, and you know they either you want to educate them and make them feel welcome and whatever. If you, if if they're a cool person, let's let's say the new person is cool, um, and you know they're not an idiot and they're really wanting to learn and and whatever but say you know they're they're a little bit slow to learn some things and they they may make mistakes and whatever um sarge deserves his own channel hi uh card funebre hey Gab uh, gabriel welcome sarge i don't know if he would be able to pull off his own Eric, you always feel bad for new... Okay, so you fall into the camp of like, oh, like it sucks, especially if you know the work culture of your job already. Like you understand that like, you know, um, Derek is an asshole and he, he will treat everyone like garbage. And, you know, Angela, the new girl has come in and you're like, oh, Angela, <laughs> can I just take you under my wing because... You know, Derek is a dick and he's going to make your life very difficult. Because you just know. I am the same as you, Eric. I automatically mother any new person that comes in. So long as they're willing to learn and that they are they come in with like zero ego. And they're just like, okay, I'm here to learn. I want to learn and I want to, um, you know, make friends with every... Not make friends, but uh, make it so that we can have at the end of the day, a successful work day, right? So, um, <laughs> so, uh, hold on. I, okay, so Gabriel, you say, I love new people at work because I can show the right way to be on. Yeah, exactly. Like you wanna show and like create an environment where people feel comfortable people feel like hey we're working towards a common goal and if you all hate your job together <laughs> it's so much more it's so much more um fulfilling if you know you have a team of people who we're all on the same page like yeah okay derek is an asshole but 
Angela and I, we tight and we know what we know our job. We know how to get it done and we're good. And you look forward to coming to work because you have that rapport. Um, and so chaos, you're saying I'm the helpful type, but I also work three jobs. Wow. Good for you, man. That's great. Um, Ryan, you say you're understanding and help. Uh, helping I hold a nasty grudge against people who didn't try to help me break the cycle <laughs> Ryan I feel that I feel that um, I yeah and Travis definitely try to build up new employees uh, so they can help take the load off my back yeah hundred percent like you we want to share the workload we want to make it easier to like get the work done and then if you notice that Angela, I'm just giving names to people. Angela is a bit of a slacker and you're like, okay, bitch, <laughs> we need to talk because this isn't going to work. If we're going to work together, let's be on the same page. Let's, you know, I know it sucks, but if we both shoulder the workload, then it's, it's all good. And Dharma, you're saying I'm em the empathetic new employee, unless they make more than me, then you're on your own. How do you know how much they, oh, uh, how much they uh, make? Unless you ask them, I guess. But I don't know. I don't really like to ask people, like, how much do you make? Like, I don't. And, let, and then I find it very tacky when people do tell you. Like, I had a, a coworker one time that we were out for drinks. And he actually said to me, oh, no, no, no. It's fine. I make more than you. And I was like, that is fucking gross. I'm sorry. Don't say shit like that. That's nasty. Um... I've been there, so I try to help as much as possible. And that's, I think, the most important thing. You've been there. You know what it's like to be the new person. And you don't want to feel like... You don't want to feel like uh, you're just left out in the water, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, you don't want someone else to feel like that, right? Um, I always let them know it doesn't bother me if you ask me questions all day. I've worked with real pricks who never helped. Oh. 100% Walter, 100%. Like, I'm the very, very much the same way. I'm like, if you need anything, please just ask me. Uh, and I remember I did, there was, I did uh, the job that I worked, the five o'clock in the morning thing. A new person, a new girl uh, started and she, there was one guy on our crew who was a real prick, like not a nice guy at all. Hated new people, hated having to like teach people anything. He'd been there for years, but you know, clearly just had a serious attitude. And she comes up to me, she's just like, I'm just gonna say his name is Derek. <laughs> she's like, uh, what is Derek's problem? Like, why is he so, is it just, is it me? And I'm like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Let me give you the rundown on Derek because Derek is a fucking asshole and this is why. And if he's treating you like that, you, you can't even you can't even go to the manager because the manager and him are buddies. So, you know, that's the reality of what we're having to deal with. Because and I'm like, if you have any questions, just come to me. I know I haven't been here as long as he has, but at least I will seek out the answers so that we can all you know, so that I can help you and that we can all work together. Fucking hell, I hated that. Oh my God, I hated him so, 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 so much. And I'm really not the type of person to be like, um, say something to someone's face unless they really push me. And he's the only one that I'm like, I, I did end up saying something to that I'm like, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> like. He had said something really sexist and just just a dumb comment um, that just, like, why? Why? Like, we're trying to get work done here. And like, I don't want to hear about your quips uh, on women and their driving skills. Like, I don't think it's funny. I don't think you're funny. So you, you should close that mouth of yours. Like, really close it. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, shit. Um, sorry, I'm missing. But it's easy because I work with lower functioning people it makes being nice easier ah okay so do you whoa, what kind of job do you do I'm the understanding type because if it's a good co-worker then it makes my job exactly thank you thank you 
if it's an annoying person it's the worst but gladly now i work at home oh yeah no if it's an annoying lazy person that they've hired it's like wh why are you even here seriously <laughs> why are you here you were not making my life better you were making it harder on everyone else here and ugh. yeah like and it's hard for me to talk with new people but trying to help if they ask yeah absolutely sergey it's like uh Sometimes it is difficult though because I I do get intimidated by new people who are very loud and very like uh, ramp, uh, bo uh, boisterous people because it's just it's just like okay no you're new you need just need to dial it down a little bit like it's just just you're about a here I need you to be about a here and that just may be an introvert thing I don't take kindly to people that are like like it's just too much too too much. But um, maybe, but it also depends on the job. <laughs> uh, it's hard, for, uh, sorry. Uh, well, it's better to have a great work environment with great vibes, because we're basically, and that is also super important, Arod. Hi, by the way. Yeah, it's super important. Like you gotta create a good environment that you like coming to for 40 hours a week or, or whatever it is. Like what? If I can help someone get it quicker, it saves time in the long run and makes it more likely that they'll stay. Properly staffed last week for the first time in two years. Last Jesus. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, I remember last time I dared you to ban me and now I'm a mod. <laughs> hey, uh, Rez, how's it going? Thank you. They are from Spy. They make ski goggles and glasses I guess I've had these glasses for so long um, I work on a mowing crew for people with disabilities oh fantastic um, my last job was not working directly with people um, with developmental disabilities but um, servicing the servicing the services that are afforded to pe persons with disabilities. Um, hi, Winter Dream. So, yeah, the reason why I bring that up is, oh, here's the other thing too. Can you, when you start a new job or when you're about to start a new job, are you the type of person that can kind of tell more or less what kind of work environment you're working, walking into? Because I've definitely done uh, job interviews where I'm like, m maybe it's just like the empath in me, I don't know, but I'm like, something seems off here. I don't know what it is. And sometimes when you're being like interviewed by HR, it's hard because they're like trained to be like bubbly and happy and whatever. But um, if I get the opportunity, I will, if it's an office job, I will walk around and like just kind of suss out how everyone is feeling. And um, My other jobs I work for myself and so yeah you suss out how everyone's feeling right and just how they conduct themselves and whatever because I am the f a firm believer that the people at the top of you know any corporate structure of some kind of any kind rather um, and that could be in an office on a mowing crew uh, you know, doing archaeology, whatever. Um, they also have crews as well. They set the tone for the kind of environment that you're going to be working in. Um, so, and I and before I never used to to do the whole like suss things out and work, you know, uh, like walk around or whatever. I would ask people if they worked there. I would ask them like point blank. How do you like working here? Because, you know, it, they're already working there. They may be working there because they have to, and they will be more likely to sort of anonymously tell you what it's really like to work there, right? Anyway, so I'm a really firm believer in kind of that 
top structure kind of trickles down and you get an idea more or less of how it is. And, and the same goes for working on movie sets. You have the people that at the top, which some would argue are the actors and some would argue like directors and producers and whatever. Those people set the tone for the rest of a shoot or the rest of a, whether it be a film or, or whatever. And, and the same goes for theater because they're workplaces too, right? Much as people sometimes don't think that is a workplace. And it's so interesting to me how different on all of the, like the, the work that I've done, how different each set is. And sometimes I'm working with the same people multiple times and we recognize each other. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, da, 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 I work with you on this. And, but it's so interesting to me how it's like night and day on some where, you know, you can work with some really passionate people who love um, working with other passionate people um, who are more welcoming of, of new people and, or less. And that's why I was asking like, when you have a new person come in, how do you react to them? And, you know, you do you share your mutual love for the things that you do? Or are you just like, I hate my life. I don't want to go home. <laughs> and there are definitely all those kinds of people that are on in a, in a workplace and uh, on movie sets. So it's just so interesting to me how that happens when you walk into it and you can feel it. You can feel that everyone is not feel like they're just they've checked out they're just they hate it they hate working there sometimes it you know they they, they can't hide it they can't hide that like i i don't want to be here <laughs> and that's just like it's like oh and i lost a guy teeth now and i've said this many times where i've walked into a situation that i'm and like i said with like a job interview or whatever the same goes for me walking into a movie set i'm like Ooh, okay. People are all right. This is the tone. This is the tone that's been set. <laughs> you just kind of have to navigate within it, and and that was it's it's hard. It's hard to deal with that when you when you I, I personally find it very hard to shut that out and be like oh, well, whatever you know. Um, I want to sit and chat with people and talk and talk about work and and make things easier instead when you're working with people who are stressed and they're not you know whatever um have i ever had to fire somebody dharma um not fire but um uh like sc not sc ugh, reprimand i've had to do and what was awkward about that was that he was one of my friends, like a friend of mine outside of work. And I think my manager at the time, I was like a supervisor at a, re a retail store. I think my manager at the time did it on purpose because she knew that we were friends. And she's just like, I want you to tell Bobby that if he is late one more time, he's getting the chop. I'm like, why can't you tell him? Why am I having to tell him that? You tell him that. You're the fucking manager. <laughs> like, or get the assistant manager to do that. I'm just like a low level whatever. And I supervise literally two or three people a day if the AM isn't there. Like, why are you? Anyway, it was so awkward. I'm like, so, uh, Bobby, um, yeah. So I, I kind of threw my manager under the bus. I'm like, uh, uh, Angela is telling me that I have to say this to you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you've been late multiple times. Uh, I'm, 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 and if you're late one more time, she's going to give you the ax. So get your shit together. He's like, what the fuck? Why couldn't she tell me that? I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I was not a very good manager, especially if it's my friend. I'm like, oh. Um, I'm waiting to get those new Bluetooth glasses. Oh, interesting. Hey, Ian, welcome. But once I get into training, I'm like, oh, this is going to be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been there too where you're like okay the, the the interview seemed okay people told me they love working there 
the only reason why they told me that they love working there was because it was so fucking clicky that there was a core group of six people and I asked one of the people that was in that core group of six people they're like it's amazing I love coming to work whatever but that click was I like fucking airtight no one could get into the the mean girl circle and if you tried they'd be like really like you can't hang out with us like that those types so going into training I knew I could already see oh fuck okay well there you go it's done like I'm gonna have a miserable time here I didn't last very long there of course I walked out of dozens of jobs because they didn't feel right and they probably weren't yeah like you could you you have a, a feeling about it um I always scan the fate uh sorry this is Walter I always scan the faces and attitudes I make mental notes and go from there p.s always know your exits as well you never know especially nowadays Ugh, good advice <laughs> Dharma I'm so good at quitting jobs <laughs> same <laughs> um I search on Glassdoor for most jobs to read the reviews for people who work or worked there. It's usually the best way in traditional jobs to find out if they're gonna, if you're gonna like it. Hey, uh, uh, John, I was gonna call you Sprite. My last job was a pile of shit. I hear what you're saying. Sorry, I'm like really congested today for some reason. Um, yeah, Glassdoor is actually really a great indicator because I also like the fact that they talk about the 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 CEO like what the relationship is with the CEO. The one job that I was working at that started at five o'clock in the morning, I did look on Glassdoor to see how it was. Um, and I'm like, mm, okay, CEO doesn't get good reviews. And it was also funny too, because uh, a, a guy that I ended up working with uh, two years ago told me that he was working at a really fancy restaurant in Toronto. Uh, he's from Belgium, so he just, moved to Canada for some reason. I don't know why. Anyways, so he was working at a really high class, like whatever. The CEO of this company that I was talking, that I was working for, not at that time, but later on, he told me this story like, oh yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I served her table. This, this is a, it's a female um, CEO. I served her table and apparently what happened is that she forgot her, um, like her phone or something at the table. So he went over to pick it up and give it back to her. And he's like, I was pounced on by these security people. I don't know where they came from. He's like holding, he's like, I was just holding the phone. And then all of a sudden this, this dude comes in, just like, Aah! like just came, put the phone down. And she's like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I said, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Considering the corporate culture that we had, that makes like, uh, this person was untouchable. Like you, you, don't, you don't fuck with her, you know what I mean? I mean, I get it, it's her business, but it made sense. I'm like, yep, that checks out. That definitely checks out. Uh, I hate when managers delegate their responsibilities or can't handle conflict. They applied for the responsibility and get paid for it. Yeah, I think that's also, like, I guess it always goes back to what kind of manager you prefer. Um, and I've definitely worked with other people who don't like to be micromanaged. And then I've worked with people who really like to be micromanaged because they have trouble focusing. And they need somebody to be like, okay, I need you to do this now and this now and whatever. And they perfect, they respond perfectly well to that. I'm kind of in the middle sometimes. I'm I get distracted and I need somebody to be like, yo, where's this? thing they do that da, 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 and I'm like oh yeah sorry okay I'll get it I'll do it I'll do it I don't promise um but other times I'm like don't I know what I'm doing please just don't micromanage me like I hate that um but then I've also had managers who are so busy like just doing everything under the sun that all a lot of important work goes under the radar and isn't seen to in time for he or she to uh, review it. And then when it comes time to say present it or whatever, they're like caught off guard and then they get mad at you because they're like, why didn't you come? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you come to me and tell me? I'm like, yo, 
I contacted your ass three times and you were busy doing all kinds of other shit that had nothing to do with your your uh, your main responsibilities here. Don't throw your frustration or your embarrassment onto me. Like, I gave you the finished product that's been sitting there for a while. Like, that's on you in terms of your prioritization of your time. Sorry. Um... Absolutely, even, uh, Michael. Absolutely, even with multi-billion dollar companies, the big dog set the tone. It, I, it's, I think so. I agree. Like, the person at the top or people at the top set the tone and everybody just kind of, you know, goes with it. Um, Cafe Nubre, you're asking if I've ever been to Argentina. I've never been to South America. Um... John, my convention center job was like that. Dozens of various conflicting personalities like the high school. Oh man, the high school lunchroom, 100%. Um, <laughs> RFJ, you gotta go. Okay, well, thanks for hanging out. Pew, 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 you're awesome. <laughs> um, I work on a farm in customer service and the owner was an old creep and told me to go make him a sandwich. I said, I don't work at Subway, so I quit. And then he messaged me on Grindr. And we <gasps> uh, ew. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. People are so fucking gross. Read one review on a company where employees must put square on their table when they were going to the restroom. And when on one table standing square, no one could go to the room. What? That is actually weird. That's just weird. Oh, and there was also one rule in an office that I worked at that you weren't allowed to, to adjust your hair at your desk. You Oh, you weren't allowed to adjust your hair, take off your shoes, um, because there was one particular woman who was just bothered by everything. Like, if you did say, like, did this or... There's so many people that are grossed out by hair. I'm like, okay, well. And I know that I was guilty of definitely just being like, okay, I'm just gonna do this quickly. My hair is greasy and disgusting. Just just, go, just deal with it. <laughs> so like doing this or like kind of flattening it or whatever. And she complained. She fucking complained. I'm like, you couldn't have just come over to me and told me like, hey, if you're gonna brush your hair, you're gonna do something, I don't know, being a normal human, do it in the bathroom because I don't wanna to have to see it. Like, if you're so concerned with everybody else, work from home and then you won't have to see it. Like, really? That fucking drives me crazy. Like, I mean, it's uncomfortable when, <laughs> when people uh, confront you about these sorts of things where you're just like, why can't you just tell me? Just tell me, like, is... It was just such a... She was... She was a, oh, man. She was a Karen. She, her name wasn't Karen, but she was a Karen. <laughs> um... What else is going on in your lives? Tell me more. Walter wants a quesadilla. Somebody get Walter a quesadilla. What was the other question that I had that I wanted to pose to the chat? So, hmm, there was the workplace thing and how you respond to new people, how you respond to like bosses. Because I think, oh my God, there's a hair in here. Speaking of gross things. <laughs> um, huh. He was so creepy and evil. He paid me $8 an hour and made this elderly lady carry gas cans and sheep and stuff. What? Uh, yeah, I read another a Choosing Beggars uh, post of a, and it was it was something, I, I'm sorry if I look like a fucking ghost, but, or like I have no eyebrow or no eyelashes, but <laughs> I'm just bothered by the wearing my glasses. And I just smashed myself in the mouth. Um, it was a Choosing Beggars 
um, post set in Toronto because it is they blacked it out but it said something about Eglinton and DVP which is a um, uh, in, like intersection in Toronto North Toronto and I find that babysitter ones are the best because you have people who have multiple children and they both work uh, like the mom and the dad or dad and dad or whatever or mom, mom and mom for that matter it doesn't really matter the couple who have the kids um, don't have the time to take care of them so they'll hire somebody they'll put a like a notice up and I've seen this multiple times especially in Toronto okay uh, I have a daughter and a son five and eight well behaved looking for a babysitter for four times a week or something to pick up the kids from school bring them home make them food do this um, uh, and this particular one was like no you're not allowed to uh, sleep on the job no you're not allowed to watch YouTube no you're not allowed to have people over um, there will be a four-week trial if you're okay with this the uh, what was it a hundred dollars a week or something and the amount of time that this person would have had to spend with the kids would have been you would have been paying like three dollars an hour to to spend time with these kids hundred dollars hundred dollars a week Canadian which is like two dollars US <laughs> and yeah you're not allowed to watch YouTube you're not allowed to have people over you're not allowed to stay over you're not allowed to do this and da 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 no uh what was it no students like okay who hurt you? Because like that seems like awfully specific criteria. My shirt is satanic. You are satanic, John. Um, I miss working from home. I keep catching all sorts of illnesses at this news. Oh man, are you not over your your uh, sickness yet, Denny? If I was her manager, I would have said she was wasting my time even complaining. You know yeah like why and then the thing is is that after she complained about it my manager caved and was like yeah so I wanted to say it was like a a, um, a meeting we had uh, with like our team or whatever and she brought it up in the team meeting I'm like oh I'm like really really she's just like oh well it's been brought to my attention stares at me and another girl because both her and I apparently were the offenders with putting tying up her hair or doing things like that um, and she also complained about people doing stuff with their makeup or on their phones too much I was like yeah but discord is so awesome <laughs> no discord wasn't a thing back then but still um, hey pitchfork welcome I have a degree in elementary education, so I find that it's the teachers who are extremely clicky. It's a put off for sure, and most don't want a dude in the classroom, or the parents at that. Oh yeah, that's shitty. And, and I've heard that from other friends of mine who are teachers, that it's extremely clicky and like gossip runs rampant. It's, it's not a good scene. Um, our Patreon community is going to remain forever, question mark. What? <laughs> John, what are you talking about? Are you asking in general? Um, Luna, I'm just going to throw this out there since you were the reason I picked up a guitar and became a musician in 2002. If you're ever bored or want to listen to music, check me out. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Um, d exactly, Danny. A robot. Like, that's not even a person at the end of the day. Like, you, you're you expecting so much from some... Like, it's just incredible the amount of um, demands that this person was... Like, if, if... I don't know. I can't really say that, you know... 
you know, some parents are really in a bind and they really do need somebody to help, but you have to understand you're not hiring an, a robot or a nanny for that matter. It's a, like a babysitter. Like you're just looking for someone to make sure your kids don't stick their fingers in a, in an outlet or whatever. Eric, $100 a week, that won't you get one day's worth of rent in Toronto? Exactly. So that's why most of those like babysitter things make it onto choosing beggars. Cause it's like, okay, you live in a beautiful, huge condo and you're going to pay somebody only a hundred dollars a week. Like really? Like who the, f okay. But what's sad is that people will do it. There will be people that do who are like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. hundred dollars a week. I'll take care of your kids without realizing like how exploitative that is, but. Hey, Corey. Oh, that sucks, man. That sucks, Denny, that you had to deal with that. It's terrible. Um, Dharma, my sister taught public school in Florida. Her stories were so Florida. I miss it. <laughs> A lot of Florida man or Florida child, I guess, in that case. Um, buffalo chicken dip. Nice. Uh, oh, John. Yeah, the video, um, the Patreon video was one, the Patreon's changing. Yes, we're still going to hang out, but like I said, it will only be for another year or so. You have to watch the whole thing. <laughs> It is a really, it is a soup spoon, actually. I, I don't have my um, small spoon with me, like a teaspoon. Like I only have big, big ass spoons. And this is a Korean soup spoon. Or like this, that's not a soup spoon, actually. Sorry, it's a, a bibimbap spoon. So you use it to stir the rice and vegetables together. So. I don't know what this means, but I don't know. Anybody reads Korean? Nanny McPhee would do it for free. <laughs> I started watching reruns of Super Nanny. Do you guys remember that show? What was her name? Joe? There was... <laughs> There was one couple on there who had two sets of twins within two years of each other. Um, and <laughs> they they just gave up disciplining their children. Like they just like, whatever, it's, it's fine. Um, and it was really, I should link it so, so you can watch it because it's like hilarious. The kids are, such brats and it's it's almost funny and even the mom kind of found it kind of funny and joe super nanny is just like that's the reason your kids are such assholes because you just laugh at them all the time <laughs> okay um cory uh the patreon may change but the discord should remain the yes so the discord will remain the same um like i said it's not none of this like the changes are going to happen now the Patreon in like maybe a year or so will go away and I don't, I don't need to do it anymore. Um, but the Patreon, the discord will, nothing will change there except for roles. Obviously I'll come up with different roles. I want to do a Canada road trip cause I'm still paying off my Euro trip cause I quit jobs as well. Any Quebec, Ontario cities you suggest? Um, I would go to, Hmm. Well, Toronto, if you've never been, is kind of cool. It's like a, I, I wouldn't even say le uh, more polite. <laughs> it's just a nice city, lots of stuff, I guess. Uh, Montreal, I would go to, um, if you're interested at all in ca Canadian politics, go to Ottawa. <laughs> if you want to see really old French charm, go to Quebec City, where they literally don't speak English at all, so keep that in mind. Um, 
Um, the naughty, st the naughty step is great. And she taught the naughty spot and the naughty step to these kids. This particular episode that I was watching and I was like just dying laughing. But like Joe, she don't fuck around, man. She was just like, listen, you don't hit mummy. Okay, you don't hit mummy. And the kid's like, and she just grabs the kid's hand and the kid's like, <laughs> like, yes, fear of God. I love Joe. She was just great. Oh, love Super Nanny. Didn't they also have Super Nanny USA for a while? But I prefer the British one. It was really funny. Oh, John, you, okay. Now you get it. Perfect. I'm glad you're on the same page. Oh, you speak French. Great. Well, then you'll do well in Quebec City. Quebec City is really, I've never been myself, but I've been told it's, it, it's magical. So yeah. That's good. Um, and any other, no, those are really the only cities you, you need to see. You kind of want to go to Canada one day. Everybody should come to Canada. Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of hitters on that show. Not haters, hitters. Kids just being like, Meh. like, there was one that kept smacking, it's not funny, one that kept smacking his mom like upside the head, like just like hitting her, <laughs> just being like <sighs> And it was because, I think it was because the father would like smack him upside the head, like be like, oh, don't do that. So the kid just, it's all about uh, mimicking, I guess, right? <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Yeah, man. Super Nanny was great. I would love for her to be my mom. She was just such a cool... Well, my mom is wonderful, too. Don't get me wrong, but, you know. Um, John, I was incarcerated with a French-Canadian dude. He kicked my ass at chest constantly. Yeah, I think you've told us that. Iron Fist Nanny, 100%. Um, we used to go to Canada because it's two hours away and could drink at 18. I wanted a more memorable and cultural drink. So... When was that? Because <laughs> our drinking age is 19. Well, sorry, everywhere except for Quebec. Quebec is 18. Like, we would go to Quebec and be able to drink there. Even though, I don't really remember... Oh, when I went to go see the NV Nation, I did have a drink there at 18. I was like, I had drinking legally. <laughs> I could never imagine hitting my parent. I wouldn't be here right now. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Anyways. Um, so now it's 1230. And um, I feel like I wanted to like stream till 1245-ish. I don't want to do it too long. Even though this is like the longest breakfast I think I've ever, <laughs> ever had. Um, it's taken me forever to eat just this, but I'll get there. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, the one conversation that I wanted to, to talk about, we've talked about, so. <laughs> um, speaking of accents, I was watching this movie called Caffeine and the American actors had the worst English accents. I think it's with the exception of Hugh Laurie, it's one of my talents that I can tell if something is off. Even like his American accent is so impeccable, almost indiscernible, which, but you can hear it when you find out that he is, that Hugh Laurie is British. Um, even I did know him from previous, but I honestly, didn't I, like I didn't put two and two together I'm like wow his American accent is really good but I can discern whether or not like I'm like something's off about 
your accent. I don't know what it is, but there's something off. Like, um, what's her name? Jillian Anderson. Her accent is very, both are very good. She's able to do both because I think she grew up in both the UK and America. So she can like switch between the two. Hers is very hard to, to discern too. You're like, mm, it's, it's like a watered down British accent, but her American accent is like amazing. Um, I was in AA when I turned 21, so it wasn't a big deal. Oh, good. Good job, man. Oops, keep hitting this with my um <laughs> uh, I, I missed some there was a question here I, do you dig finger 11 just listen to TGB OBS the other day the album holds up um I loved them a lot we even played a show with them I think at one point and I ran into the guitar player on the street in Toronto once, and he was just like, hey, Valid. I'm like, do I know you? <laughs> but then I realized, oh, very, very quickly. I didn't say that, do I know you? It was a very like quick, like, I don't know who you are. I don't know. Oh, OK, I know who you are. And I can't remember his name. But they were very good. Um. Hey there from Russia. Ooh, more Russia. So we're talking about accents again. Why it became so relevant on every chatter you have on YouTube. I, you just happened to come in at that time because I was talking as the super nanny. So we started talking about accents. Let's talk X-Files. Oh yeah, I'm there. Yeah, so Z, for you, it's like, okay, you have American and UK connections, so you can kind of switch between the two. For the first five years of my life, I didn't have this accent. I had a South African accent. So I can switch between the two. Um, not as well anymore, though, because my parents, their accent is also very watered down. Like my mom's is more or less the same my father's is depending on who he's talking to changes and I find also I was watching um, you know how Vanity Fair does they ask actors from different countries the slang from their from their respective areas so for example they talked to uh, what's, Jamie Dornan and talk to him about Northern Irish, um, Northern Irish slang. So his accent, even during that like 10 minute spot became more, it was started more neutral and then became very, very Northern after a while. And, um, and then also people from the South of the U S uh, actors usually who speak in a neutral American accent and then as you know say they're from texas or whatever but they speak in a normal neutral uh, sorry in a neutral accent and then as they're talking about the slang they just descend into full texan and it's great i just i love seeing that like oh okay now we're full texan again <laughs> and then the ones that catch themselves like wow i went full full texan there that's crazy how quick that happens but and i noticed also because i spent a lot of my youth in the US I will sp spoke more American style with your very open vowels uh, and then as I went back to Canada and I spent more time here I deliberately adopted a more Amer uh, Canadian accent because I wanted to fit in I guess I don't know because <laughs> people are like house who says house <laughs> like oh we'll change <laughs> Um, I just want to say all through high school I had your pick on my book covers and you helped me get through high school Aww. thanks chaos you know who got me through high school everybody knows the answer to this 
Chino Marino. <laughs> Are you looking kind of pale? I hope it's not because of a headache. No, it's just my skin. <laughs> I think it's just the lights. They're, um, they're on a cool setting and not on a warm setting. So it's kind of bleaching me out a little bit. That happens. I just spit all over myself. Fantastic. So what's everybody doing, doing with the rest of their day? I think I'm going to wrap up here real soon. We've had a... A good little, I'm almost done. I'm using the end of my yogurt as a good time to end. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, what I am doing, I think I'm going to film the rest of the third episode for my, my patron thing and I'll do that and I'll do some laundry because I have to clean and yeah spend some time doing some musical arrangements that's also oh and then I also have a lot of lines to learn for this week <laughs> shitty well not shitty it's work I have to do it still sp <laughs> still planning a Spice Girls cover for her AA <laughs> Did I say I was gonna do that? <laughs> I, th I thought I was gonna do it specifically for Corey, but like just record it just for her and send it to her. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I, I, It's been kind of a tradition for me to do one cover at least. Um, and I don't know what it's going to be yet. Um, all right, Dharma, have a good one. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Deftones forever, 100%. Oof. Sarge is good. He's just right sleeping because he gave up trying to bother me. Um, you hate, I hate yogurt too, actually. I force myself to eat it because of the protein in it. And apparently because I'm a migraine sufferer, you have to have a certain amount of protein in the morning with the first I believe 30 minutes to an hour of you waking up um, you need or so, so I ate an egg which is only six grams because it's a medium-sized egg whatever um, and then this is nine I think it's between 12 and 15 grams of protein in the morning I have to have because they're like you need fuel for your brain otherwise it's just gonna rebel against you <laughs> Um, yes, I do like Koino Yokan. It's, or Yokan, whatever. Um, but you're planning on watching TV, eating, maybe play some games, check out Discord, and wait for my, your wife to get home. Wow, it sounds like a nice little Sunday. I love it. Are you down with the you done with the Spice Girl cover? Hmm, I just gotta figure out which one would be good. Only thing I don't like about, well, yeah. Only thing I don't really like about yogurt is the consistency. So that when you're like, Ugh, it's like the reason why I don't like bananas. Okay, I have done my yogurt. Question one, will you pick up Monster Hunter Iceborne on PS4? That's the second time someone has asked me that. Not on here, but somebody else asked me about Monster Hunter on my Twitch stream. Maybe it was you, I don't know. <laughs> um, I've never played the, any of the Monster Hunters. I will have to check it out. Uh, did you get to play with Dimebag? back on Osses. I didn't get to play with him, no. I got to watch him play, like very, very close. He's a, he, he was uh, a fucking legend. So good. All right, Ryan, have a good time eating with your fam. Ian, have you ever met Chino? Yes, I've met him 
three times. Each time was weirder than the next. <laughs> FYI, they say the body only actually processes about nine grams of protein, so any consumption is not absorbed. I don't know. I'm just going by what my neurologist told me. 12 to 15 grams seems to be helping, but also she told me to not be stressed out. And I'm like, how do you not be stressed? I don't, I don't even know how to, how do I respond to that? Yes, mine is Greek as well. Greek. Um, and then she also told me that I need to take CoQ10, B2, I need more magnesium, I need this, I need that. I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying, okay? So, um, hey Lucy, welcome. No, it wasn't you? Okay, maybe then I really do need to check it out because you're maybe the second or third person to tell me or to uh, ask me that, Chris. Speaking about accent, do you have this special about instead of about? I will have you know that there are people in the north of the U.S. that also say about and some Midwesterners say about. Uh, do you like the birthday massacre? They're from Toronto. They're great people. I grew not grew up with them, but um, they're some of them are from London, so I knew most of them, um, and we all have mutual friends. And um, Rim used to play in the Grace Dynasty with me. Great people. I haven't seen them in years, but yeah. Uh, Mark, I tried Icelandic shir, shir, I think it's pronounced shir, I don't know, <laughs> uh, yogurt. Did you know that technically it's a cheese? I like it because it's thicker. It's like, it's a, a hearty, you know, I've never tried the real stuff because I didn't know about it when I was in Iceland for like literally uh, two days, but I would like to go to Iceland and try like the real shit. <clears throat> hey, Chaos. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> Bye, Chaos. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, and you're absolutely welcome. Oh, you missed the OzFest tour, Michael. I'm sorry, dude. Um, <clears throat> yeah. All right, I'm done my yogurt. All right, y'all. It is now 1245, almost 1245. And yeah, I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to come on here, hang out, talk about, shoot the shit, eat breakfast together, fold laundry, whatever you were doing. Um, Al Torres, pig face this summer? Maybe. I don't know yet. I have to rearrange my schedule maybe a little bit. Um, but stay tuned. That's all I'll say. <laughs> And um, yeah, so I'm glad that we got an opportunity to do this. Um, so I'll do my spiel. I am streaming tomorrow as well on Twitch. I don't know what I'm playing yet, but it'll be something kind of low key. It is a holiday tomorrow uh, here in Canada. So, and I also have a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> I've got a lot of work stuff to do uh, for the week, so. We'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, so yes, I do stream on Twitch as well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time if you want to check that out. Um, so yeah, I want you guys to have a really good rest of your day or evening or whatever you're doing. And uh, we shall see you um, on the next YouTube chatty, ch ch chatty? chatty, whenever that may be, I don't know. Uh, always follow my Twitter. Um, or turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when I do go live next here on YouTube. That's probably the easiest way. So have a good rest of your day. We'll talk soon and all that fun stuff. I'm going to go clean. Bye.